today. I thought, because I get so many questions about powder resin, I figured I'd go through a comprehensive list and lesson of how I resin. Now, there are thousands of videos of resining out there, I know. I'm just gonna do what I do, and you know, if it helps you, great. If not, I'm sure it will help anyways, but I'm just saying, I'm not like an expert, expert resiner, but I've been, I resin all my pieces and I've been doing it for a few years. So here's some tips and tricks along the way. The main reason I'm doing this video is because so many of you are scared to resin, which I get because it seems so daunting. When I started, I would not resin. I would make Elliot resin for me. I was so scared. And then I started doing it. I was like, wait a minute. Yes, you need like a lot of stuff to prepare, but once you actually do it, it takes like, no time at all. So let's discuss what you need. Here is the list of supplies. Number one, always safety first. Some resins say they're like low lock and it doesn't matter. All resin, you need protective gear. So this is a face mask. There's many out there. What you're looking for is ones for vapor because there's different ones. There's ones for like um, pieces and particulates and things like that. You want vapor because the resin is a vapor. Um, this happens to be 3M. If you just, most of the stuff you can get on Amazon, but if you just kind of Google face mask for vapors, you'll get it. Now, something I don't have here right now is you also want goggles to protect your eyes from the fumes and you want glovies. Now, what I find, I wanna show you something actually. I had a cut, like a tiny little cut, okay, that I didn't see and I resin and I got a bit of resin and this has been three weeks already, okay? I got a bit of resin and not even like, just like, just like a thin thing, I must've just swiped it and I couldn't and it made a huge situation right here and it really, really hurt. Resin on your skin, is horrible. So what I actually done is because I didn't think my hands were that small, but you want proper gloves that fit. I actually use two layers normally. And what I started doing is I actually saran wrap my arms, especially because when I do big pieces, it is more um, messy and a lot more movement. Rather, if you're just doing like little coasters, you'll probably be okay. But bigger pieces definitely get harder to do. So those are your safety things you need. Let's talk about room temperatures and environment for your resin. Resin loves heat. So whereas when you're painting in a hot room, well, it's actually really hot in here right now, but that's okay because I'm gonna resin. But when you're painting in a hot room, that's not ideal because your paints get like really thin and um, yucky and it's really hard especially for blooms it's really hard to do a bloom in a hot room however resin loves warm they love like 75 degrees they love chilling it helps um the resin move faster it helps the resin cure faster so and you want about 50 percent humidity as well so if it's super dry um they don't it doesn't like it as well now is it going to ruin everything for you no it just makes an easier time for everyone if the conditions are perfect. But to be honest, like when are the conditions always perfect? Never. Um, I have put an air filter in my room to get rid of dust and things like that. I think dust is the hardest to deal with, with resin. Um, it, Cause it just like attracts any little thing. So covering your piece, we'll talk about after is really important. Um, all right, let's talk about preparing your pieces. Now, a lot of people don't do like big pieces that I do and that's okay. This is just how I prepare my stuff. It's the same if you're doing coasters or something else. However, when I do <clears throat> my rounds, because taping the back of a round is really difficult and I don't mind <clears throat> the, the wood showing when my piece is done. So, First thing you need, now I use blue tape. I believe that it's actually uh, cheaper than the green scotch tape, but I find this comes off so much easier in like a dream and the green sometimes 
get like things underneath. I've never had a problem with the blue. So for circles, I tape around the edges and I leave a little lip and I'll show you what it looks like in the end, but I just take my blue tape, I could open it and very simply start. I put it where I want it. Okay. And <clears throat> I bring her out and I just really, you want to, you know, I see what I'm doing. I really rub, obviously this is like not the best cause I'm rushing, but you kind of get the idea where you rub, rub. Now for a square, you could, here's my handprint. You could just take the back because it's much easier if you don't want to leave your sides um, exposed. But I, this is the final look. I actually really like the look of it, especially if you're using wood. I think it's really pretty. Here's a final piece. Um, I think it's really pretty, but if, if you don't want to, if you like your sides painted, that for a square, you can do that. Now, let me just show you how easy it is to take off. I started the one already and I figured I'd show you. The blue tape, here's a circle. And now, if you find your, see, it's easy peasy. If you find your resin is sticking or there's a part that's too thick, you can take your hair dryer and just heat it up and it will make it kind of looser. But you kind of get the idea. I really like that clean edge. Okay, where are we? Let's talk about what you'll need. So we did the preparation. I'm trying to be as like organized as possible. You know, that's hard for me. We did the preparation. Let's talk about actual resin time. So I, in Canada, they should really start giving me discounts because I love them so much to talk about it. I use art resin. This is not art resin. This is artworks resin. You can only get it in Canada, unfortunately. There's a lot of good resin brands in the States as well. A lot of people like KS resin things like that. Now, depending on what you're using it for, if you're doing coasters, you want a heat resistant resin and there's only a few that are really high. For instance, Stone Coat, I believe is really high. And I think KS is really high for hot mugs. If you're using it for art, it doesn't really matter. Now, your resin usually comes in two parts, A and B. Now this is different than casting resin. Casting resin is people who make um, like molds and, and high things and it's much thinner and usually their ratio is like two to one. It's different. This, these resins are usually one to one, okay? That means one part resin to one part hardener. What you need is a measuring cup. This is, I just got it on Amazon. This is a stone coat measuring cup. Um, I actually don't like this specific measuring cup because it doesn't have any actual measurements it just has the one-to-one -one measurement so most cups other than the stone coat have like in ounces let's say so you can fill it all the way up to like here and know the ounces that you're talking about um especially i actually even use bigger cups especially because i pour on the bigger stuff but you will need a measuring cup and you'll need something to mix it with i don't actually mix it with this for my big cups, i usually actually use a paint stirrer or you can get silicone stir sticks. Still, silicone is great, I just wanna show you. For resin, this is like a little silicone cup I got on Amazon too, because I was doing resin art. And when it's dry, you pull, and it like totally comes right out, and you can clean it, and no waste. So that's a little tip. Um, fun to play with too. So, um, so you are mixing your resin now. Follow your directions. Every resin is different. Now what I do is, and a lot of resins tell you to actually put the part B, the hardener in first, because the hardener is thin and the actual resin is very thick. So once you have a thin liquid in here and then you pour the thick resin, it's easier to mix rather than putting that sticky thick resin first and liquid on top, it's harder to kind of mix together. Now you want to mix for until now for this, I mix for about three minutes. Okay. You start to see a difference when you first mix, you kind of see these like striations of the mixing together and it's not very clear after about three minutes, you'll see, and I'll show you in the video when I actually do the resin, 
but you'll see it starts to get clear. You see lots of little bubbles, that's okay. But you want it, you want it, and I kind of like look in the cup and you can see there's not many lines and it's pretty clear and mixed together. Now, if you're in a very cold climate, some people like to soak their resin in warm water for a bit to thin it out. That's totally okay too. Just know that when you heat your resin before you use it, it actually quickens the curing time. So if you're doing art, resin art, you might not want to do that if you're doing a lot of stuff and want to take your time a little bit more. The resin working time is actually pretty good. Um, I would say you have a good like 20 minutes or half an hour to do. It will tell you, your resin will tell you, but I'm just thinking back because normally what happens is I mix too much resin all the time. And then after I finished resining my piece, I said, oh, I have resin left. I don't want to waste it. So I throw some colors on and I do resin art with it. Um, so I have quite a bit of time to do that. So we are at mixing the resin. So we've mixed our resin and it's ready to go. Let's talk about preparing our piece. So here, I'll just show you this little guy. Here's a little circle that I'm going to resin. Um, what you must do next is take your 99% isopropyl alcohol and you must wipe your pieces very carefully. There's nothing that resin hates more than oils from your skin or oils from silicone or things like that. So I get a lot of questions of why there are, why some people get like little divots or holes in the resin and there's three possibilities. So one possibility is you didn't clean it and the oil is repelling the resin away. Number two, you over torched your resin to get the bubbles. When you burn it and over torch it, it's kind of gets those holes. Number three, you did not put enough resin on your piece. So it's kind of pulling away. Okay. So those are the three main reasons for problems with your resin. Once this is all cleaned up nicely, you, what I do is I actually use these cups to place my piece on, on my mat so to hold them up, but you can use whatever it is, but you do want them held up. Now, there are resin calculators out there, especially for whatever kind of resin you use. I of course don't use them, but you should. I just, you know, I'm lazy that way. I probably end up putting more resin than I need to, um, which is just my, my problem. You don't need to do that, but I do want to make sure that I have enough because I normally don't have to do two coats. And if you do have to do two coats, that's okay. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I get a nice layer. I get a nice thick layer and it's pretty smooth and good. Now let's say you get a hole or a hair or whatever it is you do. You cannot just, uh, fix little holes really. I mean, I think you might be able to use UV resin and maybe make a hole. I've never done it before, so maybe don't quote me on that. But normally you just got to sand it, redo it again. Because resin is self leveling, it will fix itself and you won't even notice there was a problem. So the next tools you need, by the way, what we we're talking about is butane and a torch. Um, this is just a little kitchen torch from Amazon. And torching is one of the most important things to do because as you're mixing your resin, there are a lot of air bubbles. So you want to get those air bubbles out and you'll see in a minute, but really I like resining in daylight because it helps me see the bubbles and I really get down to like eye level of the piece so I can see and I torch them really quickly and get those bubbles out. Um, then when you're done, you must cover them. Now there's many different ways to cover them. Some people have, if you're having like smaller pieces, you can get one of those cute like picnic tents on your table, put that, cover it. Um, because I use big stuff, I get bit like, so I get taller cups over my pieces and I just use a big canvas and I cover it that way. So I think I covered everything. So these are all the tools you need. Safety equipment, um, mixing equipment, and finishing equipment and there you go so i guess we'll just do a quick resonating job and see what happens if this helps please let me know or if you have any questions let me know um let's get to resonating 
So here's an up close of my measuring cup. I'm gonna fill the uh, hardener up to the number three. And I'm pretty good at being precise with it. Look at right up to that line, gorgeous. Then I'm gonna add my resin up to the six and I really, really try to be exact. Now my resin today happens to be really thin because it's really hot in my room. Usually it's actually thicker and gloopier and harder to mix. So that's a good argument for heating your resin because it is easier to mix so you can see when i first start mixing it's pretty milky looking and not clear at all this is about after a minute you can see it's still kind of cloudy but it's getting clearer and here we are after about three minutes i try to show you but it's kind of hard to see but it is much clearer and you just see the bubbles and we're ready to pour the resin so i did an up close of this one Again, I don't measure. There are great resin calculators on there, uh, on the internet that you could look for. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, I use my hand, but you could use any tool. They have a lot of different tools for spreading. Um, they have like these silicone tools with the teeth in it. You could use a popsicle stick. I just find it easier for me to use my hand, especially when I go bigger, because it helps me um, feel if there's like a, a little hole that didn't get any resin. I just prefer it that way. And I make sure to rub around the edges. Here I am with my torch. Look at those little bubbles pop. That's really satisfying. So I do that um, a couple of times and then I let it rest. Now, look at this is what we're looking for look at that it's like glass you can see the clouds in the piece so that's pretty good so here i am doing the other ones i'm wiping them down with the alcohol and do my little puddles and smooth them around with my hand again now sometimes i wanted to show you another way um, when you pour it you can tilt it just like that so there's many ways to spread the re resin there's no right or wrong whatever you feel good with here i am popping those bubbles up and down on my knees and really trying to get um, all of those bubbles out a few times so i sneaked in this is about 12 hours later i just wanted to check on them I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Look at that sparkle. By the way, those pigments are TLP pigments. And all these pieces I've done on previous videos, if you wanna search them, this is my beach. I think the beach turned out really nice. Um, so yeah, look at those sparkles. And I'm gonna show you in a minute cause I couldn't wait to take off the paint uh, the tape so this one you'll see um, look at how smooth that is and it's pretty cute that's a little six incher so in a minute I'm going to show you a quickly taking off the tape and I hope you guys enjoyed this video see how easy it comes off just like one two three and clean edge which we love and I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think um have a good day like this video subscribe if you're not subscribed um love you guys bye